Hey guys, are you a creative type who writes code or does anything uh, project related? Uh, do you save things on a flash drive or randomly in Dropbox? This tutorial is for you. You should be using version control for anything that requires a few days worth of work, it's not a one-off, and you need to actually be able to track your progress. So what is version control and why bother with all this? So it's an easily abstracted away uh, versioning and backing up of your project. So you can easily look back and see what changed and what you did, what bugs you caused. Um, it allows you to easily tag branches um, for release. So you can actually fix bugs if it's code on top of those that particular release. Uh, you can easily compare your code versions to see where bugs occurred. So even between releases or commits within a specific release, uh, you can allow pushing to remote repos. So you can actually collaborate with other people who are working on the same project and maybe they branched off and went a different way. You'll see that with forked uh, open source repositories and things and maybe you want to merge back. It allows for a lot of flexibility this way. Um, and there are free private remote repos we'll talk about later to make this easy so you can actually um, push your code out to these remote cloud repos and you don't have to worry about ever having to back up locally. And so if your house burns down or something, you, you still have your code. Um, yeah, and so last note here, don't use file version one, real version two, and drop blocks and all that, please. <laughs> if it's a one-off, that's fine. But I mean, if you're already doing stuff like that, you should be using version control because honestly, you're, you're already doing that manually and you're gonna make a mistake at some point and you're gonna lose your work and you're gonna be really upset. So you might overwrite something accidentally. All that stuff's taken care of with version control. You can't easily overwrite something without doing something very uh, advanced. So a lot of the safeguards are there for you and you might as well use them because it's free. So when should you start using version control? If you're asking about this, you should probably be using it. Uh, if you're creating work that you care about at all, I mean, it could even be something more creative related like writing or music or art and you just want to reference it later or there's a million different reasons to use version control uh, if you're on a team especially because I mean when you have a team you have to work together you're gonna get conflicts when you merge your code together or whatever asset changes you have going on you need to be able to mitigate those changes um, in an organized way uh, you can use automation to restrict merging of code if it breaks the release or there's any kind of conflicts. So you can see right away when someone makes a uh, pull request. That's when someone requests to make uh, a push into a, the main repo uh, with a code change. You'll see if it breaks, you can get the automation run those tests. And if it breaks the code, you can have them fix it before it gets merged in. Uh, if you're working even solo on anything important, you're going to want a version control um, if it's anything important. So that's, that's the basic uh, litmus test here. So if it's something important you care about, use version control. And pretty much I overuse it because <laughs> it's free and you might as well. All right, all right, so you get the point, right? Use version control, it's great. Uh, so how do you get started? Well, there's a few that I recommend here. And so we can talk about the top three private repos I like to use. All right, here's my number three pick. Atlassian's Bitbucket is my third choice here. It has some pretty good offerings to start with. You have uh, up to five users on one repo. You can create as many repos as you want. You have a Jira software integration, uh, Trello integration, which I'm not sure if you need to have an extra upgraded Trello account to make that work. I'll talk about Trello in another tutorial. Great organization tool. Um, you get max size of around one gigabyte. I've never reached this in a code repo before, but if you're using this for anything creative, you may want to note this because it probably won't meet your needs if you're using large assets. Uh, it does compress everything though when you upload it. Uh, build minutes, this has to do with a pipeline I was talking about earlier for auto building for say, uh, you know, PRs that you're gonna submit, things like that on a team. If you're just an individual, you probably don't need a lot of these, so that's probably not a big problem. Of course, if you wanted to update and do one of the paid tiers, you have a lot more features. 
uh, larger repo size and more build minutes and other features here. However, I can show you a way around this in another tool that I think might be a little better for you. The UI is really simple to use. As you can see here, I have a lot of random repositories from the past years. Um, you can easily create issues and your pull requests and create new repos. All those kinds of things are really standard and simple. Um, I pretty much like the interface. It's pretty easy to use. And you can easily search through all your code from this area as well. So say I want to search through my individual code and I want to look for uh, texture atlas I created. Maybe just the word the atlas in all my code. I have a bunch of stuff in here. So Anyway, it's, it's really nice. It's a pretty good interface. Um, you're going to find a lot of this in other offerings too. Um, so it's nothing like really stand out, but useful. All right, let's get to my number two choice. I'm sure you've heard of this one. It's the one that started it all, GitHub. I'm sure you've seen plenty of open source projects like Godot and all sorts of different things hosted here. And this is pretty much your go-to if you have an open source project. Uh, a new addition they've added is the private repos. So now you can create a private repo. And let's go over what they offer for that. So here they pretty much clearly spell out the top things. You get your unlimited private repos, like we did with, uh, with Bitbucket, and you'll see this in a lot of offerings now. Um, and you get three collaborators, so the five that uh, we got with Bitbucket. It's a little bit less uh, size of a team for your free tier here. Auto issues, bug tracking, we, we got this already for with Bitbucket as well. And project management, I'm not sure what they mean by that, probably like Jira type tools or things like that. Um, you're going to see this is pretty much in your industry standard though. Uh, a lot of the tools here are really nice, um, but I would only suggest going this route if you have a really small team or you have an open source project because there's no limits on open source projects. You can use all their uh, enter enterprise tools like uh, their automatic build tools, uh, issue tracking. There's a lot more features you get for free uh, with open source. So similarly to Bitbucket, you have a one gigabyte of free storage um, with private or public repos, I believe. Uh, you can pay for the extra as you can with other offerings. For most uh, simple projects and games, especially 2D ones, you probably will never go past the one gigabyte limit here. So it probably isn't a big deal, but if you have a large 3D game or you're, you know, having managing a large open source project, you may reach those limits. Um, I, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure though they're pretty flexible with uh, open source projects a little bit. That's how they were in the past at least. They used to not be a set quota. I'm reading through some historical stuff on uh, Stack Overflow and just. From what I remember in the past, I think that they're a little more flexible with those. But if you have a private repo, it may not be as flexible. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's get into the number one pick I have for private repos. All right, guys, GitLab wins hands down in this competition between private repos. The main things that I look at here are the unlimited number of collaborators. You can have a huge team for your small indie project or whatever you have going on and 10 gigabytes, so 10 times the size of everything we've looked at so far for our private repo offerings. There's tons of features. I haven't even, I haven't even scratched the surface on how many things there are here. I mean, there's time tracking and multiple issue boards for, I'm assuming, maybe have multiple teams. Uh, there are specific to groups as well. I, I haven't used half of these things. I don't even know where to begin on this stuff. <laughs> Obviously, the CI and CD, if you have on a team, this would be great. I'm, I should probably start doing this for my individual projects too, but a lot of them, they don't require compiling for, say, like if they're scripting type projects. Maybe not so much, but I could run automated tests, which would be really nice. So I'm probably going to look into that even for my Godot projects and those kind of things that have more scripting and stuff like that as the main uh, game driving language. Uh, definitely though, if you have something that's like a JVM type project or 
C++, this is great because you can see if you broke builds and things like that. Um, yeah, there's just so much here, guys. Like, it, it's definitely the hands-down winner for the private repo. Um, I mean, even like the API stuff, you want to automate some of your, your workflows. It's just, it, it's multitudes higher. This is just crazy. So, yeah, that's my number one pick. So one thing I noticed missing, though, compared to, say, Bitbucket and GitHub is an easy way to search through your code base uh, just on your individual projects. Uh, so it's actually there's an open issue about that right now. So that's one that's one reason why I kind of have a, a aggregation of different tools I use. I usually use uh, GitLab along with Bitbucket. Um, also because I just like to have more than one repo that's uh, private and cloud-based to push my code to. So I have a few different remotes I push to just kind of make sure I have it backed up multiple spots in case something happens. But it's pretty pedantic. But also it gives you this access to different tools. Maybe some of them do better than others. And so like the CI tools and things are better in GitLab. Now you run into the problem, of course, if you have a project that goes above Bitbucket or GitHub's private repo limits of one gigabyte. You can only do it within GitLab. So that's one little thing I noticed. There might be some other stuff too in the UI that maybe uh, you could have some improvements with, but that's the main thing I noticed is just searching through the code. Um, but everything else is really great. All right, so let's review. My top three choices were GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. GitLab being the best. And I still think that GitHub is a great choice for open source projects. Since it's so ubiquitous, it's been used for so long. If you have an open source project, that might be still the way to go. You have a lot of tools there, and I think they might be more flexible with this capacity limit. Uh, definitely, though, if you are just going all private and you have a private team, the unlimited collaborators and 10 gigabytes capacity, that's just, I mean, it's hard to say no to that. Um, don't be afraid, though, to just try multiple different services out like I do. Like right now, I use all three of these, but mainly for my private ones, I was using GitLab and Git Bitbucket because they were the only two that offered private repos. They were popular. And uh, so GitHub just started offering that. So I haven't really even explored that as much. But with the same offering as Bitbucket, you don't really get a whole lot extra out of that. And so I keep my public ones here and my private ones in Bitbucket and GitLab at the time being. And so yeah, those are those are pretty much all the uh, the stats here that you kind of need to know. Um, have any questions? Let me know. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, just like or comment and subscribe to uh, get more tutorials like this. And feel free to ask me any questions below.